Uh, welcome to our workshop. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of discussions to assist teachers, instructors, and even some learners in getting and meeting their goals. This specific one, we're going to be talking about the four state input. This is the digital field device simulator that uh, I've built dozens and dozens of these had many of them built by firms that manufactured them for me in bulk. And these have six combination input-output circuits. So each one of these toggle switches and lit push button form a single circuit. Now the LED inside of this push button, that's connected up separately to an output with 24 volts source to the output and then to this LED. It has nothing to do with the inputs. But this toggle switch and the form C contacts on this push button, they form one circuit. Now these are the the small format for uh, push buttons, you know, normally closed, normally open contacts, LED backlight, and then a two position, maintain position toggle switch. So it's a single pole double throat. The problem with these is that they require soldering. And that in itself isn't that bad, but if you're going to use these in a classroom situation, whether it's in a corporate setting or even worse, high school or maybe even college, uh, sometimes you have students that think that if you push the button like this, that's not as good as doing that. You know, so you have people that like to hit buttons. And these aren't super expensive buttons. They're plastic, except for the metal contacts. You can replace these, you know, if they get busted. The problem is you have to desolder the wires, with a, use a solder sucker or a wick, and then reinstall. And you, if you damage the wire, meaning that uh, you can't quite get it cleaned up good enough to get back into the solder lug, then you have to replace the wire on both ends and that means violating the the integrity of the solder joint on the other end of the wire so an alternative to that is to use 22 millimeter the larger if you want to say um, IEC or NEMA type push buttons and switches so that's what we're going to show you now that's going to make a much larger box than this this is nice and convenient let's look at a video clip of how you would wire up and remember, this is a toggle switch, but it's also a selector switch. That's one position, then you select that position. Mechanically and electrically, a toggle switch and a selector switch, that is two position, that has a normally closed and a normally open contact selector switch, that's no different than this toggle switch for our purposes. Let's look at the 22 millimeter. Sitting in front of us here, we have a six-hole push-button box. The number of holes and what it is is irrelevant to what we're going to talk about. And mounted into it, I have a two-position selector switch, and I have a two-position push-button. The difference is this is momentary. Push it down, changes contacts, release it, changes contacts. This is static, and it maintains... The positions for the sets of contacts and what we're going to do is look at how to wire these two input devices in series so you see we have two red wires so we are passing through from this red wire through two switches to this red wire now let's zoom in a little closer on the back of these operators, so this is a selector switch and this is a push button. Those are called operators, and they operate these contact blocks. These are two completely different brands. That's why the contact blocks look different. These are more black and these are yellow. But what you will notice in common is that you'll see a green piece of plastic here, red there, green here and red there. The green is a normally open contact block and the red is a normally closed. And it, you can see it printed right here on this one. It's easy to see because it's white 
text on a black background, whereas this is not so easy to read. Nonetheless, each of these operators is operating two contact blocks, one normally open and one normally closed. So you can see that I have wired the contact blocks together. So I'm coming from this operated normally closed to this operated normally closed and from this operated normally open to this operated normally open. And then on each side I have a red wire coming in here but then I have a jumper over to this contact block and vice versa over here I'm coming in with a red wire and I have a jumper to this contact block which means that this red wire on this side is common to both contact blocks and over here this red wire is common to both of these contact blocks. So whatever voltage is applied from this red wire to this red wire, there won't be any continuity unless there is a contact closed here and a contact closed here. Now right now I can see that these are not depressed. See how they you you can see you can see that these are not depressed. If I push that button, watch the red and green plastic. See how it extends out a little bit? So that's in the normal position. This is in the operated position. Now with a selector switch, it's almost irrelevant because it maintains a position. So you see now they're extended out and now they're pulled in. So I started out this way so they both look the same. But keep in mind that this is a maintained and this is a momentary. And because this one is maintained, it's really not going to make a whole lot of difference if I went red to red and green to green. In other words, I'm going normally close to normally close, normally open and normally open. The only time it would make a difference is which position you wanted that selector switch to be in to say that it's maintained on or maintained off. That'll come to light a little later. So this is how we start out to show you the electrical effectiveness of what we're doing. I'm going to add a few more wires and devices. Okay, I've added a power supply and a load to our circuit. This type of LED pilot light or panel light does not have a polarity because it has two LEDs inside of it. That way, no matter how you wire it up, or if you were to apply a low voltage AC to it, it would be illuminated. So with this type of pilot light, you don't have to pay attention to minus and plus on the power supply. But what we have coming in here on the bottom, and I'll just move this up a little, is we have a, we have a 24 volt DC power supply coming into these two terminals right here. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what the polarity is because our load in this case can handle voltage applied in either polarity. And of course dry contacts have no polarity. We have power coming in and it comes in through this red wire. And if there's continuity it goes through the two switches, comes back to this screw terminal right here. We have power applied through these two terminals right here. We have voltage coming up to this set of switch contacts. Remember we have a common here so the voltage is applied to both contact blocks. And then if there's continuity, in other words if one of these is closed and one of these is closed, then power continues to here, goes to the light, and then comes back to the power supply. And this light and power supply is in here just to demonstrate that the circuit does work. So in the current position with nothing being operated, that light is on. If I come up here and push the button, when I push the button you can see the light goes out. If I switch the selector switch to the other position, the light goes out. Now when I push the button, the light goes on. So what we have is a four state, if you like, digital fill device simulator, meaning that we can simulate maintained off, which you see right now. We can have maintained on. And in the maintained on position, we have a normally closed function. In other words, it has continuity until you push the button. And if we go back to the maintained off, that same button gives us momentary on. 
The reason for doing this on your training demos is to allow the learner the opportunity to have an, a momentary or a maintain. When you're simulating photo eyes, you normally want momentary. Typically what happens when you're doing a lab project, if you're using just selector switches or toggle switches, if you're using a maintained state switch, you flip it on because you, you want to tell the logic that the photo eye sees something. Remember, you're simulating a digital field device like a photo eye. So you flip it on, then you go to your computer screen, your laptop screen, you're looking at your logic and you say, okay, that works, okay, cool. Look, the motor turned on. And then you forget that you have an object passing through the optical path of the photo eye and it needs to be momentary. In other words, you have to remember to turn the toggle switch or selector switch back off. That's what I discovered a lot in the early days, you know, 20 years ago or whatever of doing this stuff is there's, oh, Mr. Gates, it doesn't work. And so I get to look and say, oh, look, your photo eye's still on. It thinks there's something sitting in front of the photo eye. That's how we came up with this type of circuit. And I also want to give some credit to Professor Terry Stevens at Grand Valley State University. Uh, he was very influential in adding this to his train equipment that I supply. Let's put that back in the box. Okay, this would be the off position on, off, on, maintained on, maintained off. So in the maintained off position, if you push the push button, it goes on like a normally open contact. In the maintained off position, you push the button and it goes off. This is your photo eye. You want to say that a box passed in front of the photo eye on the conveyor, so you push the button down long enough for your logic to see it and you release and the box has gone on by. But in other cases you may have a situation where you want it to stay on until stated otherwise. So it may stay on and it may be like a you're simulating a sensor on a cylinder. If that's the case then when it's retracted it's off, when it's extended it's on and it stays on until you tell the cylinder to retract then you flip it back. Now there's other ways of uh, creating like a virtual cylinder, creating logic that actually behaves just like a cylinder. But this is just some examples of how to use the four state maintained on, maintained off, normally closed and normally open. And the reason I put it in a box like this was to uh, pull the wires far enough apart so you could see the continuity going from this contact block to this contact block. Now you notice I'm touching all this stuff, that's because it's 24 volts DC. I would avoid anything, 115 volts where there's any screw terminals exposed, I would avoid it like the plague. Anybody that's worked in with electricity, I've gotten shocked many times, but it didn't take me many times to realize that I was fortunate that I didn't get electrocuted and I've got some nasty shocks. The worst ones were by accident, I just wasn't paying attention. Stick to 24 volts DC on your equipment if at all possible. We have two components of our four state digital field device, the input simulator. We have them spread out with two empty holes in the middle. You don't have to do that. I did that simply so I could line up the contacts if these were rotated 90 degrees, you, you see they could be right next to each other, but the circuit wouldn't be, it wouldn't have the visual clarity that this one does. Finding a box like this with 12 holes in it, probably going to have to go to an electrical distributor. I seldom see anything like that on eBay, and I've never seen one on Amazon. So in our lab projects, we typically use six inputs and six outputs, which means that we need six selector switches wired up with six push buttons. Now I'm going to connect up the light or the LED that's inside of that blue push button. In our demo unit or our training station, these two wires right here, these two red wires, one is attached to each end of our switch circuit, our four state switch circuit, and it doesn't matter 
which end you use for which. One of them's going to go to plus 24 volts DC, and the other one is going to go to a screw terminal on the input module. So switching these allows you to get four states for an input. The output is built into this blue push button. So this is an LED lit push button and on the back side of it there are two terminals they're in the middle and you have two wires. Now in this case uh, this light is also probably not polarity sensitive meaning it has two LEDs. So you have two wires here one of them is going to go to the output screw terminal and the other one is going to go to common and we we're not hooked up to a PLC so we're not going to turn that light on and off but there it is there's your four state digital field device simulator inputs and outputs